Pakistan can reduce the perceived effectiveness of an adversary's first strike capabilities. This lessens the incentive for any side to initiate a missile attack, as the chances of success are diminished. The ability to protect critical strategic assets such as nuclear deterrent forces or major command and control nodes is paramount. The HQ-19 provides an additional layer of security for these vital elements, ensuring that Pakistan's retaliatory capacity remains viable even in the face of a sophisticated missile threat. The deployment of the HQ-19 also complicates offensive planning for any potential adversary. Military planners must now account for a highly capable missile defense system that can intercept ballistic missiles in their terminal or even mid-course phases. This may force adversaries to invest in more sophisticated countermeasures such as maneuvering re-entry vehicles, hypersonic missiles, or saturation attacks to try and overcome these defenses. This can fuel a technological arms race as both sides seek to maintain or gain an advantage. The HQ-19 is not just a defensive tool but also a factor that shapes offensive doctrines and procurement decisions across the region. Furthermore, the HQ-19 improves Pakistan's ability to operate under the threat of missile attack. Knowing that there is a shield against some of the most potent long-range weapons provides greater operational freedom for its own forces. It allows for more confident deployment of conventional forces and reduces the vulnerability of its strategic infrastructure. This defensive capability underpins offensive potential, as it allows a nation to project power or respond to aggression without being overly constrained by the fear of devastating missile strikes on its homeland. The HQ-19 is a crucial component in Pakistan's evolving strategic calculus. In modern aerial combat, the fight often begins long before missiles are launched, in the invisible realm of the electromagnetic spectrum and cyberspace. Electronic warfare, or EW, encompasses a range of techniques designed to control the electromagnetic spectrum or to attack an enemy. This includes jamming enemy radar systems to blind them, spoofing their navigation systems to mislead them, or using decoys to draw away incoming missiles. The goal of EW is to deny the enemy the use of their electronic systems while protecting one's own, creating a significant tactical advantage for friendly forces. Cyber attacks in the context of air combat take this a step further. Instead of just disrupting signals, cyber warfare aims to infiltrate, disrupt, degrade or even destroy an enemy's computer systems and networks. For an air force this could mean hacking into an adversary's command and control network to sow confusion, disabling their air defense systems by corrupting their software, or feeding false targeting information to their aircraft. These attacks can be incredibly subtle, yet devastatingly effective crippling an opponent's ability to fight coherently without necessarily firing a shot in the traditional sense. The real game-changer in modern platforms like the J-35A is the synergy between electronic warfare and cyber capabilities. These two domains are no longer separate, they are increasingly integrated and interdependent. For example, EW techniques might be used to create an opening in an enemy's defenses, allowing a cyber payload to be delivered to a vulnerable system. Conversely, a cyber attack might disable an enemy's EW systems, leaving them exposed to traditional electronic jamming or attack. This coordinated approach means that the sum of their effects is far greater than their individual parts, creating a much more complex and challenging environment for any adversary. This integration is crucial for future conflicts because it fundamentally changes how air superiority is achieved and maintained. It's not just about having the fastest or most maneuverable aircraft anymore. It's about dominating the information environment, deceiving the enemy, and disrupting their decision-making processes. Aircraft like the J-35A, equipped with advanced sensors, powerful processing capabilities, and networked EW and cyber suites, are designed to be potent players on this invisible battlefield. The ability to effectively wage war in the electromagnetic and cyber domains will be a key determinant of success in any future high-intensity conflict involving technologically advanced air forces. Pakistan has been steadily developing its electronic warfare capabilities over the years, and recent events have provided glimpses into this growing prowess. The aerial skirmishes that occurred in February 2019, following the Balakot incident, are often cited as an example. During these engagements there were reports and claims from the Pakistani side, suggesting the effective use of electronic warfare. This included assertions of successfully jamming Indian fighter communications and missile guidance systems, contributing to the operational outcomes observed during that period of heightened tension between the two nuclear-armed neighbors. 
These real-world encounters, even if limited, provide invaluable experience and data. They allow military planners and engineers to assess the effectiveness of their current EW systems and doctrines against real adversary equipment and tactics. Lessons learned from such engagements undoubtedly feed back into training programs, procurement decisions, and the development of new EW techniques. For Pakistan, the 2019 events likely served as both a validation of some existing capabilities and an indicator of areas where further improvements were needed. This continuous cycle of operational experience and refinement is crucial for staying ahead in the rapidly evolving field of electronic warfare. Beyond specific incidents, Pakistan has also been investing in acquiring and indigenously developing more sophisticated EW suites for its aircraft and ground-based systems. This includes radar warning receivers, jammers, and signals intelligence, or SIGINT, collection platforms. The aim is to build a comprehensive EW capability that can not only protect its own assets, but also actively degrade the effectiveness of an adversary's systems. The collaboration with China, a country that has made significant strides in EW technology, is likely a key factor in accelerating Pakistan's development in this domain, providing access to more advanced systems and expertise. The growing emphasis on electronic warfare reflects a broader understanding within the Pakistan Armed Forces of its importance in modern conflict. It's no longer a niche capability, but a core component of military operations across all domains, air, land and sea. As platforms like the J-35A come online with their inherent advanced EW and cyber potential, Pakistan's ability to contest the electromagnetic spectrum will likely see a further significant boost. This reflects a strategic commitment to developing asymmetric advantages and ensuring that its forces can operate effectively in an increasingly complex and contested electronic environment. Modern air forces are heavily reliant on space-based assets for a wide range of critical functions, and Pakistan is no exception. The effective operation of advanced aircraft like the J-35A and precision systems like the HQ-19 is increasingly intertwined with capabilities derived from satellites. These include precise navigation and timing, secure communications, intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, as well as weather forecasting. Access to reliable space-based services is therefore a fundamental enabler of contemporary military power, significantly enhancing situational awareness and operational reach for air forces globally. A particularly noteworthy development for Pakistan is its increasing utilization of the Chinese Beidou Navigation Satellite System. For many years, the United States Global Positioning System, or GPS, was the dominant global navigation service. However, reliance on a foreign-controlled system carries inherent risks for any nation, especially during times of conflict when access could be degraded or denied. Beidou provides Pakistan with an independent and reliable alternative for navigation and timing services. This is crucial for guiding precision munitions, ensuring accurate navigation for aircraft and ground forces, and synchronizing complex military operations without depending on GPS. The benefits of an independent navigation system like Beidou extend throughout the military. For the Pakistan Air Force this means J-35. A pilots can navigate with high accuracy and weapons can be delivered with greater precision, even if GPS signals are jammed or unavailable. For missile systems like the HQ-19, accurate timing and location data are vital for effective target engagement. Secure communication links, also often routed via satellite, ensure that command and control can be maintained over dispersed forces. Access to Beidou thus enhances operational autonomy and resilience for the Pakistani military, reducing vulnerabilities associated with relying solely on other global navigation satellite systems. Beyond navigation, other space technologies play a vital role. Reconnaissance satellites provide crucial intelligence on adversary movements and dispositions, helping in strategic planning and target identification. Communication satellites enable long-range secure data exchange, essential for network-centric operations. Early warning satellites can provide initial alerts of missile launches. While Pakistan has its own space program and some indigenous satellite capabilities, Partnerships like the one with China, which has a very advanced space infrastructure, can provide access to a wider range of space-based services, further augmenting the capabilities of its modernizing air force and overall defense posture. The introduction of the J-35 stealth fighter and the HQ-19 missile defense system into Pakistan's military inventory marks a significant development in the strategic landscape of South Asia. 
These systems, sourced from China, represent a qualitative leap in Pakistan's air power and defensive capabilities. The J-35A brings fifth-generation attributes like stealth, advanced sensors, and network-centric operations, while the HQ-19 offers a robust shield against high-altitude ballistic missile threats. Together, they signal Pakistan's commitment to modernizing its armed forces to meet the challenges of a technologically evolving security environment in the 21st century. These acquisitions will inevitably influence the military balance between India and Pakistan. While India has also been modernizing its forces, notably with acquisitions like the Rafal fighter jets and the S-400 air defense system, Pakistan's new assets are aimed at narrowing any perceived technological gaps and, in some areas, potentially introducing new asymmetries. The J-35A, for example, introduces a stealth capability that will compel India to adapt its air defense strategies and sensor networks. Similarly, the HQ-19 provides Pakistan with a counter to certain classes of ballistic missiles, which could impact India's strategic strike calculations. This ushers in a new era of technological competition in the region. Both India and Pakistan are now fielding increasingly sophisticated military hardware, including advanced combat aircraft, missile defense systems, and capabilities in the electronic warfare and cyber domains. This competition is not just about numbers of platforms, but about the advanced technologies they embody and the doctrines developed to employ them effectively. The focus is shifting towards network-centric warfare, information dominance, and the ability to operate in highly contested electromagnetic and cyber environments, all of which these new systems enhance for Pakistan. Ultimately, the impact of these new capabilities on regional stability will be complex. On one hand, enhanced defensive capabilities like the HQ-19 could strengthen deterrence by making aggression less likely to succeed. On the other hand, the introduction of advanced offensive systems like the J-35A, coupled with the ongoing technological race, could also lead to heightened tensions and an increased risk of miscalculation if not managed carefully through dialogue and strategic restraint. What is clear is that Pakistan's acquisition of the J-35A and HQ-19 is a game-changer, reshaping its defense posture and setting a new baseline for military capability in South Asia for the foreseeable future.